Let me begin by saying, you, me, in a hotel room, it is such a dream. In my dream, this Jones wasn't involved. But uh, it's a thrill to see you. Thank so we've you. We've got the Joneses here. Yeah, I know. the Jones boys. The Jones sandwich. Yeah, well, Sounds a bit well, well. <laughs> we won't go any further with that. Okay. And, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. You look incredible. Your voice is incredible. Mm. How have you been able to maintain your self? <laughs> <laughs> Physically or mentally? Bit of both. Bit of both. Okay. My my ear, nose, and throat doctor tells me that I'm built right. The sound that you make is a lot to do with it, with your head as well as your as your vocal cords because the, the sound comes through your face. Mm. You're supposed to sing through your face, you know, so your bone structure and, of course, um, what happens in your throat, the way you, your vocal cords are. So he said, you, you know, you're just, you're just built right. You have good genes. Mm. See, because I recover very quickly. If, if I've got laryngitis or, um, you know, anything that sort of goes wrong, since then I've, I've had no trouble uh, with my lungs, except for some polyps that I had, because I was doing two shows a night in Vegas, mm you know, for a month straight with no, no nights off, you know. And, and it, that took its toll on, on my vocal cords. So by the time the, the early 80s came around, um, I started to think about getting these polyps or nodules uh, removed. And, and they did, you know, they took them off. Was and that a period of no talking, no singing? Yes, you, complete silence. But the, the, the ironic thing was, I, I was about to record Kiss and um, so I said to my doctor now, should I wait until after the operation uh, or, should I, or should I do it now? He said, well, if you can do it, you know, he said, I'll make sure that you, you, you're not going to hurt yourself. So when I tried to sing Kiss, I realized that it was all in my mid range, which had not been affected by these, you know, it was just my highs and my lows. So I think that could have been a blessing in disguise because when I recorded Kiss, I hit it hard in my mid-range, you know, and I didn't fluctuate much. I didn't try to make more, you know, out of the melody. You know, I might, I might have oversung it a bit if, if, if I could have, but I didn't have the opportunity. I just had to just concentrate on it, mm. and it turned out great because wow. it, it sounds like that. So then I think it was the, the following day or two days later, I went and had these polyps removed. So then I went to England, you know, to, to have to do the song on television, because I hadn't sung it after I had these uh, polyps taken off. And so, um, you know, it was a bit like this. Was there a risk that you could have yeah. opened your mouth and your voice wouldn't be there? Um, I, tr I tried it out, you know, he, sa he said, I took a month off. You know, he said, don't, don't, uh, don't talk for a month, which I did. And then he, I said, well, is there any guarantee with this? And he said, well, I, I've never had a failure, you know, and he had been practicing then for, for 20 years on singers. So he said, I, you know, I've got a good record. I've never, I've never had a failure. Mm. Uh, but he said, it should be fine, you know, because, um, and, and you'll, you'll notice when after the operation, that it'll be easier for you to sing. Because when you have these polyps on your cord, you, your cords got to come together, mm. you see, and they vibrate. And if, if you have a lumps on the inside, you've got to squeeze, you know, you've got to sing harder in order to get, get a clear, the get, to get the air through. So it becomes, you know, you, you're on a, a losing battle. Mm. You know, you, you're making it worse by trying to get the sound mm. out. So thank God, after he did that, it was a new lease of life. So I had a new hit record with Kiss and a, a new, new voice. A new voice as well. Did anyone take advantage of you during that month of silence? Like, did your wife say, you know what, we need, dear? Yes. We need a new, we need an upstairs. Yes. And I need a new car. Quite and, right. Uh, you can't answer me, so yes. <laughs> You were Marcel Marceau for a period of time. Exactly. <laughs> when you sing the, your songs, um, now that you're a bit older, I hear songs like Green Green Grass of Home and I hear different things in them because I'm older. Mm -hmm. That song brings me to tears. Do you feel differently about these songs because you've had life experience? Uh, yes. But then when, when I recorded that song, I was um, 25. 20, yeah, 25 when I did the Green Green Grass of Home, and it reminded me of Wales. I was reflecting on, on my, my youth anyway. So I, I didn't have to be um, older than that in order to sing mm. that song with, um, with conviction because it reminded me of being in Wales. It's still the same in, in my mind. When I do the Green Grass of Home today, it's the same thing. I think my voice has, has gotten, um, there's more quality in it, you know, there's more depth to it. So it, it could sound um, di different, 
but but the intensity you know the the or the feeling that I had when I recorded it I still feel exactly like that because to me it's about my green green grass of home mm. you know mm. which we we all have one yeah. mm. last time we spoke we spoke about you and Elvis Presley mm -hmm. and his strange way of uh Wiping his backside with a towel. <laughs> with a, yeah. Um, I was also, with a flannel. With a flannel. I was also reading about you and John Lennon. Yeah. How did John Lennon view you, your style of singing? Because it was totally different to what he was about. Well, not completely, because we, we liked the same things. He loved 50s rock and roll music. I mean, when the Beatles first came out, if you listen to the first album, there's a lot of 50s music on there, mm. because that's what they were listening to before they started writing themselves. Even Love Me Do, you know, the first song that they did, it's, it's got the harmonica on, you know, and it's got like a country um, flavor to it. So they were being impressed by American roots music. You know, if you like the blues, rhythm and blues, country and rock and roll, 50s rock and roll, had a big influence on John Lennon, especially, out of the Beatles. I think it affected Lennon more. Uh, and, and, and George Harrison, as far as guitar players were concerned, you know, they were being influenced by the same people as I was. Mm. I, I hear that when, you know, when he met Jerry Lee Lewis, he, he kissed his boots, you know, John Lennon, because he loved, and I loved Jerry Lee Lewis also. So we were listening to the same thing. And um, it, it was just that when I recorded It's Not Unusual, because there was brass on it, you know, it, it became a certain s sounding record. John Lennon and myself were, up, were on basically the same wavelength. Mm. The, the, the big difference, of course, is he was a great songwriter as well as performer, but they used to open this show with, with the, You Make Me Dizzy Miss Lizzie, you know, which was a Larry Williams song, mm. and I used to sing that song. We were cut from the same cloth, really. You know, people from Cardiff are not that different than people from Liverpool. Yeah. Mm. It's a, it's a, we had a similar uh, upbringing, and we were the same age. Mm. You know, we were both born in 1940. Because it's extraordinary, you've had like a, you know, a Forrest Gump-like existence yeah. <laughs> with all these, but you are Tom Jones, so you can drop <coughs> anyone's name because you're Tom Jones. Well, I, and, I, and I, I've met them, you know, the people that, I've, sure. that I talk about, I, I know them. And, and that one, when you said about John Lennon, and it's in the book, and when um, I did a TV show with them called Thank You Lucky Stars, and they were, you know, they were the Beatles one, Thank You Lucky Stars. And I'd been uh, booked on there, so I was watching them rehearse. You know, I wanted to s see the Beatles live. Um, we were all miming in those days, you know, the, because they didn't have the facilities for, for live mm. shows. So I was sitting there with my manager, you know, where the audience would finally sit, you know, at night. And John Lennon came out first, and he sang, uh, well, it's in the book, but he sang, uh, it's not a unicorn, it's an elephant, <laughs> you know. And he called me a Welsh puff. <laughs> so he said, Did he doing? know you were there? Yeah, he, oh. said, he said, how are you doing, you Welsh puff? He, he, he saw me sitting there. I said, come up here and I'll show you your sports puff. You know what I mean? It was like, and my manager said, hey, it's his sense of humor. And Paul said to me afterwards, you know, he said, look, John loved that record. You know, it's not unusual. That's why he did it. If he, he wouldn't have acknowledged you. He wouldn't have said that. Mm. But that was his compliment. <laughs> Instead of just saying, oh, I love that record, Tom. Yeah, you know. that was his way. That's, inde that's endearment. Exactly. If you couldn't sing, you mentioned earlier about the when you had nodules cut. Mm. Can you imagine a day when you wouldn't be able to sing? When, when I get laryngitis, I hate it. Especially when I have to cancel shows. Mm. Uh, that's, that's my worst time. It's like somebody taking your strength away. You know, it's, it's like being a boxer and somebody says, well, you've broken your hand, you can't use that now. You know, if you... If, if you're a heavy hitter, and you think, oh my God, then my strength. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then my strength is my voice. So when I can't, it's like somebody tying my hands behind my back. It's, um, that's the worst feeling for me. Mm. And, and you can't like do the jerk on stage for no. the whole... No, the oh. whole That's your signature move. Well, the jerk was, you know, that's the one I got into trouble with when I first came to Australia. That's right. The police chief said. And, and how did that work out? Did they have to come and see you do it? Yeah. I, I don't know whether they'd heard that uh, my act might have been a bit raunchy or something. I don't know. Because, you know, I had trouble with the BBC in England and then I had trouble on the Ed Sullivan show in America and then came to Australia. Um, so he said, we're going to film you a rehearsal. And if we think it's too... I don't think he used the word raunchy then. But anyway, whatever he used, he said, if, if we... Then we, you, you, you just don't tour. And I said, uh, okay. 
So they filmed it and they, and they couldn't find it. They, oh, but when he said, what, what are you doing? You know, when I was doing, you know, the jerk. Mm. <laughs> and he said, uh, what are you doing? And I said, the jerk. And he said, hey, you know, <laughs> are you making fun of me, son? And he said, no, sir. No, sir. And Did I you said, tone it down for them? A little bit. Mm. So, um, <laughs> but, but it was just, I was just dancing. Mm. You know, I was dancing and singing. Mm. And, uh, and that was it. I wasn't doing any real suggestive moves, you know. Australia must have changed a lot since you first came in 1966. Yes. Have you noticed, are we a different planet to the one we used to be? Uh, yes, the bars stay open later. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was the thing that, that, that hit me. It was that six o'clock rush. Oh, the six o'clock swill. You know, close at six o'clock at night. <laughs> I mean, my God. So, <laughs> in a killer Welshman. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I mean, I couldn't believe it. You know, but I mean, because my, my band was Welsh as well then, mm. in the rhythm section. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we wanted to have a few beers. Mm. And they said, well, you better hurry up because the pub's closed at six. <laughs> six? <laughs> <laughs> six in the morning at six. <laughs> you know, yeah. But cause, I mean, even in Britain, it was 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Mm. I mean, the pub's closed, you know, 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, we thought was like, Ooh, what, what is that? <laughs> But six in the evening, mm. my God. So anyway, so that, that was the first, that's a big difference yeah. I noticed. But no, no, I mean, the country has, has changed, of course. Is, uh, mm. And that, that's why we're sitting at the bar with you now. That's right. Yes. In your hotel room. With these fancy glasses in front yes. of us. Mm. Uh, just chatting to you, I can see you're still so Welsh. Are you, yes. you know, I know you live a lot of your time in the States, but is your core so, do you cry at the national anthem when the rugby's playing? Yes. I cry when Wales loses, mm. so I'm crying a lot. Now. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you've no. got hard-working tear ducts, haven't you? Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm 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 a Welshman, you know. I mean, uh, I was I was born and bred there. First 24 years of my life was spent in Wales, so uh, I'm I'm Welsh, and and I and I haven't really changed. It is such a pleasure, it's such, such a pleasure, a pleasure to sit the, here and just shoot just the breeze with you. It is. It, it's such a pleasure. I'm uh, your shows. Tickets at Live Nation. I mm. see that one is sold out. You've put on a second one. Yeah. Two shows. Yeah. Well, they told me about that. I mean, mm. that's popped that's it in your diary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah you'd hope that they'd tell you about that. What if they did? They did. Well, yes. I, I would be on my way to the next <laughs> city, and they say, oh, "Well, excuse well, me, there's, there's another show here." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, but it's every time I've come to Australia, I've had, I've had great times. You know. Thank you so much. Tom, cheers my to you. Friend. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. All the best. <laughs> you have to drink this by six. <laughs> yes, we got it. Yes. Six what time, what down, time is down. it? Down, down. Straight out of the cistern. It should be delicious. Yeah, it is. <laughs>